original Xbox, launched in 2001 and still a very much relevant piece of technology, with its extensive third party and first party support from official developers in the early 2000s, you'd be a fool to miss out on some of the classics of the 6th generation. But what if you wanted to deep dive into the Xbox homebrew scene? What is the experience like for running homebrew emulation on the Xbox? Is it worthwhile? Especially on hardware this old. The general consensus on the internet seems to be very mixed, depending on who you're speaking to and what emulators you are running on the Xbox. Although the hardware is undeniably ancient by 2023 standards, sporting a 733MHz CPU, 233MHz GeForce 3 GPU and only 64MB of RAM, the homebrew community continues to impress and push the boundaries of what is possible on older, discontinued hardware. In this video, we'll be specifically looking at heavily optimised PlayStation emulation running on the original Xbox. This is PCS Xbox. Three, two, one. PCS Xbox, first released all the way back on the 11th of May 2003. It is a port of the Windows PS1 emulator PCS X. The Xbox version was successfully brought over to Microsoft's console by homebrew developer Xport. Xport was a very prominent homebrew developer, responsible for bringing over some of the many other popular emulators to the original Xbox. Win UAEX, which emulates the Amiga line of home computers, is still an impressive emulator for the old green Xbox. Unfortunately, as of the date of this video, Xport is no longer active within the Xbox homebrew community. It seems from what information I can gather from the realms of the internet, Xport quietly left the scene in the late 2000s, possibly due to achieving everything they want to accomplish with Xbox development and commitments to real life responsibilities. Fast forward to 2023, PCS Xbox is still being maintained and actively developed on. Homebrew developers at MU Extras have taken the reins and have optimised the already impressive groundwork passed on from Xport. Initially, the builds from 2003 up to 2009 are what I like to call the first generation of PCS Xbox. These builds contain numerous fixes brought over from the PC versions of the PS1 emulator PCSX, including specific optimizations purely for the Xbox's code. These updates would fix issues with memory management and add support for more complex skins, thus encouraging the community to create more elaborate and impressive looking skins for PCSX Xbox. The second generation, MU Extras 2020-10-2021. With Xbox. 
Newport no longer providing updates, homebrew developer Madman picked the mantle and kept up with the hard work, incorporating many features, fixes and other code changes to further enhance the emulation experience on Xbox. These included memory optimization for HD outputs, a new game synopsis code, improved Samba share for streaming performance, a dummy lockdown feature to stop other users from messing with the settings on the Xbox, the list goes on, including several quality of life features, such as adding a shutdown Xbox option on the emulator home screen. One of the biggest fixes came in the alterations with the CD cord. The earlier builds of PCS Xbox had an issue with Redbook audio and how the Xbox tries to emulate PS1 audio cord. This is no longer a problem. PCS Xbox V21 Redux and builds onwards no longer have these game breaking issues providing a much more desirable gameplay experience, especially on titles that have heavy Redbook audio playback. Another addition to PCS Xbox in this era was the rearmed CD cord, fixing issues with problematic titles such as Clock Tower 2, where the characters would talk out of sync. もう Later builds of PCS Xbox would include alterations to the GTE, the Geometry Transformation Engine, once again improving compatibility. Specific options such as CD code attenuation were added within the emulation menus to fix games such as GTA 2 that had peculiar CD code. When not activated, the radio stations are completely broken and keep playing out of sync. This is no longer an issue on PCS Xbox B23. Makes me another margarita. I'm listening to Johnny Ricaro. Head radio competition now, and the first prize is two weeks at Blind Holiday Home in the Sun. Slip into the Johnny Ricaro show on the FM. Female only. Big Harley. What else would I have? The third generation, 2022 onwards. In March 2022, homebrew developer from MU Extras, Tabajara02, released his own build of PCS Xbox, specifically with CHD and pocket ISO compression, along with newly implemented GPU plugins. This drastically increased compatibility for PCS Xbox. The CHD compression is a very impressive addition to the emulator as it greatly decreases the file size of any PS1 game, roughly by 40 up to 60%, depending on the title. The compression is lossless, 
meaning that CHD compressed titles perfectly preserve all game data. The additional GPU plugins ensure that once previously troublesome titles have that extra bit of compatibility with more options to tweak graphical settings, thus further improving the emulation experience. Madmap and Tabajara 2 along with other MU Extras forum users, collaborated into the release that I am showing in this video, PCS Xbox V24 RC4. As you can see from the gameplay shown in this video, these PlayStation titles are playing great. The most recent build of PCS Xbox has more customizable options and fixes than the previous builds to provide the best emulation experience yet on the Xbox, but it is not perfect. When you first transfer over a PlayStation disc image to your PCS Xbox emulator folder and then attempt to play it, you'll be greeted by this screen. Pressing the Xbox's B button will boot straight into the game and the emulator will use the default preset options. These default settings usually won't be the optimal experience. Here's a comparison of Tekken 3 running the default emulator settings on the left hand side of the screen and to the right optimal settings that I configured for this specific disc image. Here's another example, Medal of Honor, with default PCS Xbox settings on the left and with my optimal emulator settings shown on the right hand side. Just like Tekken 3, the game running under the default emulator settings provides a really undesirable gameplay experience with choppy frame rates and bad audio. So what are these optimal emulator settings? Why can't the Xbox run some of these games properly with the default emulator settings in place? Well, there's really no straightforward answer. The performance of each game varies from title to title, the settings you have enabled, and which region disk image you are using. PCS Xbox V24 RC4 has three cores, 1.4, 1.5, and 1.5 reloaded. 1.4 is the least accurate of the cores, but has the best speed on some games. 1.5 is more accurate and is a decent middle ground between the three cores in terms of speed. It has options to change the way how the emulator reads CD cord and is generally the reason why it is set as the default emulator core. 1.5 Reloaded is the most accurate, but can be very CPU intensive, incorporating more options to fix troublesome titles with the ability to toggle on and off the experimental speed increase. I found that using this core can usually help with games that have several audio and graphical issues. Each one of these three cores have the ability to toggle the Xbox's bias, basically giving problematic titles a much needed boost to keep the frame rate and audio as it should be. There are several GPU and SPU plugins, with the most recently implemented on AI GPU being a godsend for the more demanding 3D based titles. The on AI GPU has some very interesting options within its graphical fixes menu. You can disable lighting effects and alter dithering too. These settings can fix the colour banding issues with the fog 
in Silent Hill. The lighting effects are not used by all games, so disabling them for a select few titles can drastically boost performance for the likes of 2D shooters, such as Gunner's Heaven. The game configurational screen also has additional options for the other GPU plugins including extra settings to fix issues with anything that is CPU or SPU based. Frame skipping and the frame limiter will always be activated by default within the graphics fixes menu and is mostly fine for less demanding titles. However, Driver 2, a good example of a later era PS1 game, runs noticeably better with optimal settings. Here are the settings that I use to get Driver 2 running on Xbox. I found that the PAL image of Driver 2 runs much better on Xbox than the NTSC version. This is purely down to how quickly the emulator needs to process the on-screen information, with the majority of PAL titles running much slower than the NTSC counterparts, 50Hz instead of the NTSC's 60Hz. This means less legwork for the Xbox to process meaning PAL PlayStation 1 disc images are usually the way to go for getting the best possible emulation experience on Xbox. However, there are exceptions to this. Titles such as Tomb Raider run much better as an NTSC image than PAL. FMVs, frame rate and input lag are more or less the same as if you were playing this game on an actual PlayStation 1 console, whereas playing the PAL release on Xbox provides a much slower and not ideal gameplay experience. Chase the Express, also known as Covert Ops Nuclear Dawn, runs much better as an NTSC image on Xbox. There is next to no slowdown and the FMV and audio playback is perfect. To get a satisfactory gameplay experience of Soul Reaver running on Xbox, I had to partake in some arduous testing. The PAL version has the crypt copy protection, crashing the emulation in the first areas of the game, whereas the NTSC version has choppy audio running on Xbox. The solution would be normally patching out the, the crypt copy protection, but even my out of date Windows 7 PC can't run the old XE files from 1999 to hack out the LeCrypt. I resolved this situation by using a program called The Zapper. This homebrew application hacks any PAL or NTSC image and converts it into another region. I took the original North American release of Soul Reaver, hacked the disk image with The Zapper, creating a pseudo PAL disk image. I then converted the Soul Reaver bin and Q files to CHD, fired the CHD image over to my PCS Xbox emulation folder, and then you've got a decent playable version of Soul Reaver running on Xbox. In addition, a lot of time was spent testing and playing around with the several GPU and SPU plugins. These gates twist space, laying a path across great spans. These gates twist space laying a path across great spans. Unfortunately, games such as Gran Turismo and C12 Final Resistance will not provide a decent gameplay experience on a stock Xbox, no matter what settings you use.
So, how can the Xbox play the majority of the PlayStation library, but not a select few titles such as Gran Turismo and C12, whereas the PlayStation 2 can do that without issues in 99% of cases? Well, the PlayStation 2 is not exactly running emulation. PlayStation 2s are running PlayStation games with actual PS1 chipsets within them. It's purely hardware based and next to no emulation is being used, apart from the GPU functionality. Fellow YouTuber, Mr. Ratchet, has a great video going into depth about PlayStation 1 games running on PS2. You can find the link down below in the description. The Xbox is emulating the PlayStation 1 through pure guesswork and requires significant processing power to mimic the foreign hardware and quirks of the original PlayStation. Plus, considering the constraints of the Xbox and the modern day requirements of the end user in 2023, Homebrew developers really have to use some clever programming to squeeze out every last drop of performance from within the old Xbox. You've got to take into account that it's very impressive that the Xbox is able to run the likes of Invasion from the Beyond via a CHD file at the full 60 frames per second in 720p on a console from 2001. In addition, when you compare just how far the emulation has come since the very first release of PCS Xbox back in 2003 to what it is now in 2023, the progress has to be commended to achieving this kind of experience on Xbox. Currently, I have well over 1,400 PS1 games running great on my Xbox. Discovering the optimal settings for PS1 games just for PCS Xbox can be extremely time consuming and I can imagine ultimately frustrating for some people who just want to throw the files on their Xbox's hard drive and play PS1 games right off the bat. This is why I think some people on the internet don't believe PCS Xbox is a worthwhile option as an emulator and I have to strongly disagree with this sentiment. A large majority of 2D based titles run fantastic and even the more demanding games such as Resident Evil 3 and Metal Gear Solid run just as if they were being played on a real PlayStation 1 console. There's even homebrew PlayStation games such as Magic Castle and Friday Night Funkin which are working great here. ROM hacked games such as Diablo and Alundra are both running in widescreen without any hits to performance, making these better than the original PlayStation 1 release. The sanctity of this place has been fouled. Recently translated games such as Call of Cthulhu, Prisoner of Ice, and Galaxy Frowlin Unit Final Edition are run without issues here. For controls, you are totally fine using the original Xbox controller for playing PlayStation games, but if you don't like the placement of the black and white buttons, I would highly recommend trying out the Pelican Blade wireless controller, which has the black and white buttons placed on the top of the pad, which mimics the L1 and R1 buttons really nicely. So what if you didn't want to put in the time to find these ideal settings and have the best possible emulation experience for PlayStation 1 on Xbox? Well, people like myself, Gradius3 and other forum users at MU Extras have all collaborated to create settings for the best possible PS1 emulation experience for Xbox. These settings are specifically optimized for stock Xbox consoles, which have no modifications to the processors or RAM. In the description box down below, I'll provide a link for MU Extras. I highly recommend visiting this site for anything regarding homebrew emulation on Xbox. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video of PlayStation 1 emulation running on Xbox. Take care and thanks for tuning in.